Hello everybody, time for a little bit of moped update. So I went ahead and I did my best to restore the original controls and I have to admit they're kind of ugly. There are some slide switches in here and a push button for the horn. So we got basically lights and a kill switch, but I also need turn signals, which is a problem. And if you go ahead and you look inside, there's a lot of complicated contacts. So the real question is, how do you know what positions go where? And that's what I wanted to cover in this video. And don't you know it, as soon as you need to do some, ki some kind of important video, your primary piece of tech equipment, my multimeter, decided to go tits up. So whenever I try to do a continuity test, this thing just completely fights me tooth and nail. So. You know what, instead of having to go and run for new some new expensive piece of equipment, listen, I'm working on a moped, let's get this job done. How can we get it done? All we need is a continuity test, so we just need to pass some voltage down the wires and figure out where the fuck it's going. So, I grabbed one of my LED turn signals, right, nothing fancy about it, and I just rigged it up to some alligator clips and clipped it to a 9 volt battery. So now I have a positive lead and a negative lead. And I have a turn signal that should light up every time. Granted, it's a little dim. It's letting us know that electricity is passing through. Now, before we begin, let's take a look at the control mechanism itself, okay? Notice how we have a momentary push button for the horn, which means you have to hold it down in order to contact the circuit. And that's also known as a normally open button, which means you have to push it to close and complete the circuit. Now, we're going to have to go back into that a little bit later because I made a little mistake on the uh, way my engine works and how the kill switch works, and we'll have to cover the normally open and normally close thing in another part. This is a push button on off. Now, likely single post, single throw, which just means there's two contacts. Now, this is a slide switch. This slide switch has an off position in the center and an on position on either side. So again, you know, we can look at our wiring right here. And we'll see that we have two white wires, two red wires. We have yellow, green, and brown. Okay. Now, how are we going to come at this? Now, we know that the slide switch can be enabled for left blinker or right blinker. I mean, it's, after all, it's just a switch. It's not actually making the thing blink. I'll cover that in another video. And this button here is like a click on, click off style. So we'll know how that behaves when we hook into the wiring. And this one is, you have to hold it down in order for it to work. Now, this obviously is going to have to have some sort of common wire in the middle, and it's gonna wanna route to the left or to the right, which based the, uh, these three, you know, unique colors to themselves, brown, green, and yellow. Okay, so let's get one of our probes. Let, first off, let's get this, we'll, we'll switch, this, switch this over to, uh, to the left signal indicator. We'll hook up one of our probes to brown, and we'll just go through the sequence. White, nothing. Uh, let me try to get into a better view so everyone can see. White, nothing. Red, nothing. White, nothing. Green, nothing. Up, oh, yellow. We have contact on brown and yellow, which means if we switch this to the central off position, turns off, turns on, turns off. Okay, so brown and yellow means the left turn signal indicator closes. So one of these wires is going to be a common. So we're going to just switch to this to the right side and figure out, oh, there it is, right there. It has to be the brown. The brown wire has to be the common lead. So to prove this, if we were to try to hook green and yellow up, nothing should happen at all. No matter what we try to do, just simply because you're trying to connect the left side and the right side of the single pole uh, switch, but there's not, it's not, yeah, uh, the only way to short that switch out is to, you know, bridge it over with this brown wire. So we know brown, yellow, and uh, brown, yellow, and green are our front, left, and right turn signal indicator. Now, about this horn and this push button, I'm going to enable this 
push button. I'm just going to push it down so we know that the contacts are closed. And we're just going to briefly go through the pairs. Now, it would be kind of stupid. Well, we got one of two choices here. It's either going to be a red and white pair or, you know, white as a pair and red as a pair. So, you know what? Let's just assume red and white and see what happens. So, let's just hook up to a white wire on this harness. And anything on that red wire? No. Anything on that red wire? No. Anything on that wire? No. Okay, so that didn't work. Hmm. Let's switch to a red wire. Okay. So let's go to white wire. Nothing. Go to this red wire. Up. Oh, wait a minute. We got the light to come on. And let's check out this push button. Off, on, off, on. All right, groovy. So if these guys are this, if the red wires go to this red push button, then common sense should indicate that the white pair of wires should be the horn. Beep, beep, beep. Yep, there we go. And that is how you make a simple continuity tester and figure out what wires go where in harnesses. Now keep in mind there are much more complicated switches, such as double post, double throw, single post, double throw. I mean, there's all kinds of fun stuff, but it's not that difficult. For our next video, we're gonna have to work on what I did to uh, get the headlamp going. We've got some decisions to make on there, and how in the hell are we gonna make the thing, actually, like the turn signals? How are we gonna make those blink? Until next time, cheers, beers, and bunny ears.